Yeah, that's a whole lot of no oil. So this is a Cat 16G grader. This is my buddy Quentin. This thing uh, got parked by a mine and abandoned about a decade ago. And uh, we don't know why. We don't know if it runs or not, but we're gonna try to see if we can get this thing to start up. And as you can see, it is missing a lot of parts all over the place. So uh, we're gonna go through some oils, uh, fuel lines, electrical connections, all the stuff that's needed to make it run and see what we can do with this thing. What's the thing weigh, like 70? 70,000 these? Uh, I think an H is like 65. Oh, it's, it's, H. it's an not H. Yes. Correction, this is a Cat 16 H grader, not a yeah. G. So the one concern we have with starting this machine, other than the fact that we don't know if this machine starts, is when it got parked by the mine, uh, as you could see, it got kind of pillaged for parts and pieces. And one of the things that got pillaged is this whole transmission control housing and uh, these use an air solenoid setup to shift the transmission and we're slightly concerned with all this taken apart this thing might not be in neutral or it might be in who knows what gear and we don't want to go through that shop door we don't want to go through that wall over there so we're gonna pull the axle shafts out which are behind this plate right here so that if this thing starts and if it starts in gear it stays right here. So this is a 3406C that appears to have most all of its components. Yeah. Uh, there's a bunch of undone wires and all that, but on a 3406C that doesn't matter a whole lot. We need three wires to run it? Yeah. Ground, yes. power, and then shut off? Yeah, fuel solenoid. Yep. I'm going to pull this drive shaft out of here. So that oh, for the pump? This, yep, under this little guard is a drive shaft. And it actually runs off the front of the motor and we're gonna pull that to hopefully stop all the hydraulics from moving, so. All right, buddy. Hi. What size engine is that? That's a 3508 for a 992. And that's actually the whole powertrain for a 992. So that's the transmission out of one. That's your torque converter and pump drive system. So we just tore down one and we're gonna give it new life. Yeah, this engine, I know this engine weighs as it sits right there on that stands is about 14,000 pounds. Just the engine itself? Yes. And then that's the... Transmission. Transmission. Yep. Oh, yeah, it's articulated, so it's a front half and a back half. Yes. And then this is your parking brake. So being an articulated loader, a 992, which is huge, uh, this would be the front half of the machine, this would be the back half of the machine, and then it, it bends in the middle right here, so... That's some big stuff. This is a 3408. It's another V8 cat, slightly smaller than that one. And uh, this, some trucks actually had this size engine in them, but a lot of equipment had that. So if you're wondering how to steer a grader that doesn't run, a couple of chain falls to each front wheel. You crank one tight, we loosen the other, and it turns that way. Crank that one tight, we loosen this one, it turns that way. No oil. Somebody definitely drained it. Or. So that means they might have decommissioned this thing instead yeah. of just parking it because it died. Well, usually what happens at these big mines is they can't have any leaks or. Believe it or not, mines are very clean. And if they have leaking machines or contaminating the dirt, they need to make sure that doesn't happen. So anything over five gallons is a reportable incident, according to MSHA. So they need to make sure everything is, if they park it for a long period of time, it gets drained and stored and mothballed so that way it doesn't contaminate the dirt. Wow. So this is the axle shaft itself in the center here. And it's threaded on the inside, so we're going to find a bolt pull it puts in there and then pull out on it. This here is the spindle nut uh, and all the backing plates to it. I believe if you take that off, you're going to pull this whole side frame assembly off. Which we don't want to do today. No, definitely not. Hopefully we can avoid that. There it goes. It's actually going to come out of there? Yep. Ooh. Perfect. Nice. That's exactly what we wanted to have happen. I love it when a plan comes together. 
So this is the one that slides into the differential. Yep. This is the one that drives drives the tandem. The, the dry, drive chain in there. Yep. And there's two chains on each side, and these are your brakes, and they've got big gears on each end, and that's what moves the machine. So. Cool. I'm really glad that came out of there, because that was about not to get really fun. Just gonna do one more. Yep. One more. Now, technically, the machine won't move. Because but, it's open death. Yeah, but we don't shake hands with danger around here. We're going to pull them both. <laughs> if you're anywhere in the equipment world, you know exactly what that reference was to. Yeah. That video will not die. Like, it will not it die. It will not die. Yeah. It is the ultimate heavy equipment safety video yeah. that has ever been and ever will be produced and like, it's actually free on youtube nothing yeah look up shake hands with danger nothing will top that when it comes to heavy equipment nothing. safety My, everybody that works here always has to watch that video before they start working. everybody that works for any equipment yep. construction company has seen that video yep and, and and this this video shake hands with danger like you said it is so cheesy but everything in all the little skits have actually happened in real life so it's cheesy but it does get the point across Yep. as ridiculous as it is. So I should probably explain what Quentin does here other than just try to start up old machines. Uh, we've done a couple other videos have been here. Uh, he buys old equipment like this from mines and big construction companies and all that and this isn't going to get scrapped. It's going to get dismantled and then this is Iron King. Iron King Industrial? Uh, Iron King Industrial is the Nevada division. This is Iron King Inc. Iron King Inc and they will dismantle something like this and all these components, like what they're doing here with these transmissions and engines, they will recondition them back to factory specs, basically completely rebuild them. Because when say a 992 loader of whatever vintage this is blows a transmission or needs this transmission mount assembly or something like that, CAT doesn't sell a lot of these parts anymore. A lot of them are obsolete, but the rest of the machine is still good. Iron King goes through, rebuilds all this stuff to factory specs, and then this transmission can be used to keep another machine running and in service for longer so it have to be replaced. So this grater here is not going to go back to work as a grater. It's going to get dismantled. That cab will get reconditioned. Every one of these hydraulic cylinders will get pulled apart, completely rebuilt as brand new. Things like this wishbone system that handle the articulation of the blade. You can't go out and buy that for a machine like this anymore new. They don't exist. So someone like Quentin with Iron King will completely rebuild this. All new bushings, line bore the holes. So this is a brand new spec part. And then it can go on to make another machine keep working. It's kind of like industrial recycling. Yeah, we're not a junkyard. We're a salvage yard. You salvage things. Salvage. Which, which means keep them. Exactly. And make them, use them again. You don't junk them. Exactly. And this is a giant uh, hydraulic cylinder repair rack. Yep. Which is very handy seeing as I have a tow truck that needs a hydraulic <laughs> cylinder repair. We'll see what we can do. It's gonna look ridiculous, my little tiny hydraulic cylinder for my boom on this huge bed that does huge cylinders. Huge cylinders. Well, the greatest part about this bench too, you have this big ram. Because the main problem with rebuilding a hydraulic cylinder is not actually changing the seals, it's getting the nut off the end so that you can pull it apart. And this allows you to just to pull the nut right off. Got a question. Okay. What do you do when the hydraulic cylinder that runs your hydraulic cylinder rack needs rebuilt? Well, we don't worry about that little guy. <laughs> <laughs> it actually, it, it's been, it's, you know, it's been good yeah, for the you, past you, 10 years. You don't want to jinx yourself. Yeah, right? you no. know, it, it does leak a little bit, but it leaks right into the cash tray, so it's fine. Yeah, why'd you have to mention that? <laughs> now it's gonna happen. And it's gonna happen with your cylinder too. It's gonna be on this bench and then mine's gonna blow out. Yes. Oh, I'm gonna have to use a pusher bolt on that one. Maybe two. Maybe two. cap and it's the same bolts that hold the cap on and they just stick right through on the inside so when you tighten them up they push all the way through 
push right there, you can see the mark, and it just pushes the cap right off. All right, we're gonna get two for two. Oh yeah, look at that. You know what freed it up and made it so loose? It, it was the shoving it in here with the DA filter <laughs> yeah. loosened everything up. Nice you know, and free. I was it was cold outside and I just wanted it in the shop. <laughs> <laughs> so a D8 got used. Right, so now if you look all the way through, you can see there is nothing connecting the two halves here or connecting the transmission to the drive. So now when this thing fires up, there's no way it can drive away. Yeah, and it makes it safe for both of us because if we're going to be standing on this thing, or because if we're going to fire this engine up when we are, we're going to be standing right here in between these tires. So we need to make sure there is 100% no way we're getting run over. And the brakes are locked, right? Because it's got no air pressure. So even if this thing does start, we have two foolproof ideas. Axle shafts are gone and all the brakes are locked up. This thing is going nowhere. And we're going to pull the drive shaft out for the hydraulic pump so that none of the hydraulics can move and cause any, one, spray hydraulic oil everywhere for hydraulic line system, or two, move while we're here. There's a few stains on the, on the roof from, uh, uh oh's. <laughs> we won't get into that. Because this grater, uh, not only does it steer at the front and then obviously all the blade controls move up and down, but it actually articulates right here in the middle so the back half of this can turn back and forth to articulate and the front tires can turn so it's kind of front and rear steering but this all just will pivot back and forth so we don't don't want that to happen for sure but we can well someone's already tried oh someone's already been in it so i guess we can undo it and there's only one bolt holding yeah, it together only one bolt. that that's the throttle control yep okay no we're done Got three more threads to go. Yeah. Get the air tools. Air tools. <laughs> See? There it is. Nice. Throttle control right there. So you so, wanted to pull this off so that we can run it from here and, and not up there? Exactly. And, and the cool thing about a 3406, and I, I'm not sure on all 3406s, but I know this one actually has two shutoffs. So you have your solenoid right here to shut it off. And if you actually pull this box off, this arm in here, if you click it all the way back, that'll shut it off manually too. Because there's so many applications that so, they put this motor in that we could pull this box off and it can mechanically shut off as well. So again, two safeties. Two safeties. And the greatest thing about cat machines, they're built by Americans and they're made to work on. Look at that. You can actually fit a wrench in there. Yes. So because the engineer that made it was like, Wow, someone's gonna have to take this apart in 20,000 hours. Let's make it so he can get a wrench there. <laughs> so we're taking this front panel off so that we can get to this guard, because underneath that guard is the dry shaft that runs the hydraulic pump underneath the cap. A wireless remote? Oh yeah. So fancy. Courtesy of Ben Drake. Shameless plug. <laughs> I need a remote for my rollback. Yeah, they're awesome. But the only part is I lose it all the time. I forget where I put it. So my rollback is wired for a wireless remote, I believe for all the bed functions and winch and underlift and everything, but uh, they're very expensive and I'm too cheap to buy one, so. Well, what's this crane rated for? Uh, 20,000 pounds. So we're, what's that? A tenth of a percent of its yeah, rating? It's, it's comical. Don't damage the cylinder rack. I'm going to need that. Yeah. <laughs> and now we have access to our uh, drive shaft guard there. And we can get that pulled apart. There it is. Yeah. And luckily it didn't fall because I forgot about the whole watching my fingers thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You can't 
can't tell me that's not made to work on. That was like so open mess. That came right like, apart. Whoop. Okay, okay, Mr. Cat thought of everything guy. <laughs> Why is there a Zerk fitting underneath the guard that you have to disassemble so much to get to? Well, no. There's a line that comes out of here, and it's fed off your grease, uh, grease no, no, system. There's a full Zerk fitting right here on the other side you're not looking at. Oh. You know? Uh-huh. But it's on the slip yoke that almost never moves, so. Exactly. Well, and you know what's funny about that? So I've actually got a few rental machines, and I, one of them is a 16H. And I've had this drive shaft explode before. Because no one Maybe that it's center. because there's a Zerk fitting <laughs> hidden under the guard that you can't get to. Hey, they couldn't think of everything, all right? <laughs> okay, we need that three quarter that you have. Yep. See? Three different bolts. And uh, let's get the. Go oh, down! Oh, no, no, no. Got it. Nice. Uh, let's see, you have that half inch gun, right? No, I, I have it. I have it back to you. I have That's it. That's shorter than this one, that might fit. Yep. Think it'll work? Oh yeah. Oh, this should pop right out of there. Come on. I saw it move a little bit. It's it's probably not wanting to move because it's never been greased. It's never been greased. So. Oh boy. There, oh, it there goes. you go. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. We definitely want to pull it all the way off because that's going to go flying if we try and start the motor. Like that. Yeah. Come on. Please. You have to break it loose off of this side. Yep. Just a bit of a fail. This side's moving. It looks like that side's not. Like that on your end. You know why? Because I left the bolt on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'll do it every time. Yeah, and now it's all bent over to the side. <laughs> you want to hold that right yeah. there? Perfect. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow, dry <laughs> shafts come out easier when you take the bolts out. <laughs> so this is definitely a saving piece. Yes. Yeah, because I actually just had to buy one of those, and it was a thousand dollars. You had one sitting right here. I did. <laughs> <laughs> so we check fluids, make sure we're at least safe to start, and then we start messing with wiring because we're 100% guaranteed now. We have no connection to the to any hydraulics. We're good. There is no way this machine is going to start up and move anything. It's just not going to go anywhere. There's drive shafts are gone. That shaft is gone. The motor's basically just it's motor it's, it's just sitting a motor sitting on a stand right now. Yep. Basically. Yep. So I guess now is the it's time to shine. Let's get fluid, well, batteries, and electrical and see if we can get it to go. Yeah, that's a whole lot of no oil. So if you thought this was a big stub shaft assembly, check this thing out. I would bet this is the center shaft for those two transmissions. Am I correct? That, there? This, yeah, it came off this machine right here, right there. Hopefully this doesn't run out the bottom. Did we check drain plugs? No. We're gonna learn the hard way. We're gonna dump all the oil in it first and then have it run out. Cause I do it right because I do it twice every time. Gee, who just said that in a previous video? <laughs> yes, we know this is not the correct oil for this engine, but we're going to start it up and make sure it runs, and then it's going to get shut down. This is not going out and going to work, so. Yep. Slippery and technically, up north, they run 10 weight, they run 0530. Because of uh, cold. Cause so, and this is, that's hey, what was in it. It's 20 degrees outside, <laughs> yeah. so we're doing the correct thing. Yep. It's not going to hurt it. Slippery is slippery. Yep. We do have the Eat. proper transmission fluid. Because there is a lot of transmission stuff going on around here on the other side of that wall that Quentin's not allowed on. <laughs> yeah, they kicked me out of there. <laughs> Which is a good thing. Yeah. Now, no funnel. That, that's why you're kicked out of that side of yeah. the shop over there. <laughs> is this is exactly why. I got 10% in. That's the, the clean, finished product side of the shop where they get assembled, no dirt, no dust. Very clean and organized. This is shenanigans side of the shop. Well, 
Well, the, the, and the problem is with tearing down equipment, it's just ugly. There is no way to look at, make it look nice. It's just ugly. So you do all your actual assembly of components yes. on that side. Yep. No dust, no dirt. We have a dyno over there. Uh, we have fans running 24-7, which you can probably hear to keep the dust blowing this direction. <laughs> so we try to do our best with quality control to make sure that when our customers get a refurbished component, it's perfect. There's no dirt on the inside. It's not, you it's pulled assembled. this engine out, set it on the ground right here and rebuilt it right exactly. here in the dust and dirt. Yep. Hey, guess what? Oh no. Nothing's hitting the floor. Oh good, okay. <laughs> Why would you? <laughs> My heart sank. <laughs> Any? Any? Nothing. Okay, let's get some more. Okay, five gallons. That's gonna get us done. All we need. All right, that should be. Well. Well, how many is that gonna be total? Twenty. Twenty. Okay. Oh yeah, that'll give us twenty gallons. This is a 12V92? Yes, 12V92. 12V two stroke twin turbo twin supercharged Detroit diesel engine. And we don't know if it runs. And yeah, this came out of a copper mine and it was their backup generator of one of five. And they got a new, like built a new building. These were in their old building and this has been sitting since the 80s. So they said it did run. Should we start that one up next? I'm actually scared to start that one. Two turbos, two superchargers, and a V12. But I will do it. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a fun project. So yeah, let me know if you think we should try to get that one started. We might do that. We should probably make sure we can start a straight six with only one turbo and no superchargers yeah, before we try a V12 two stroke with two turbos and two superchargers. Start small. It's, so, yeah, hey, let's start small. <laughs> this, this is starting small. Has anybody ever seen a will it start video on something like this? We were just talking about that. I see lots of trucks and, and semis and stuff, but I've never seen anything like this. Let me know. So now that we've put some oil in it, uh, we're going to use pry bar and see if this engine actually moves. Should slide right in there. Before we get too crazy. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. So it's not locked up. Oh no, it'll go. Well, it moves. So, so that's it, good. As long as it has compression, fuel, and air, got an engine. Yeah, it does. It does move. Oh, that was either going to work <laughs> perfect or not at all. Look at that, she's got two go handles, not just one, two. That means it's really good. Yeah. Okay. It's twice as heavy. <laughs> What's up? Get her in there. Fingers, good to go. All right, so we got negative, and we're just gonna bolt these together because it's fine. So we'll bolt those together, hook that up. I guess I could check the cab and see if there's a key and a trigger in it. So this cab has been quite pilfered. So here's yeah, key switch. The key switch is here, the ignition. And let me get a little light. Yeah, all the wires are still hooked to it. Okay. Yeah. Well, what we'll do is we'll do a smoke test. We'll hook the batteries up, make sure she doesn't get on fire. <laughs> yeah. And then we'll uh, we'll test the key before we bump it. See, so make sure that solenoid clicks on and off. Okay. So that way we hopefully it turns off when we hit turn the off key. Yeah, we'll the fuel shut off. Yep. So I'll go get a go get a cat key and we'll hook the batteries up and we'll do a, a cycle test on it to make sure that it is still functional. So while Quentin goes looks for key, we're gonna sneak over the other side here. Where he's not allowed. 
and this is the assembly side. This here is a transmission dyno. Those big uh, heavy equipment transmissions, they go down on this. It's all covered right now. This comes off and uh, they can test all the pressures and a bunch of other stuff I don't know how to do. All brand new stuff, bearings, machine parts, and a whole bunch of other technical stuff that I don't know. So I found a key, I'm gonna put power to it, turn the key on and off and make sure the fuel solenoid opens and closes so that we can shut it off if it starts. Because diesels do not have spark, so they run just on their own compression. The only way to shut them off is to take away the fuel. So if this thing starts, and the fuel solenoid doesn't work, you can't shut it back off. It's because you can turn the ignition off, but there's no spark, so it'll just keep running. This right here is that fuel solenoid. See, it's just got a couple wires going to it, and that, that closes the fuel supply to the engine, and that's what shuts a diesel engine down. And starting the engine is the main goal of the day, but our yep. second goal is shutting it back down yeah, after we start it. Yeah, make sure it shuts off once we get it to run. <laughs> if it does run, hopefully it does. We're going to leave these loose on purpose, that way. Can you yank them off? Yep. Smoke test. I do not see anything crazy happening in here. I wonder why the light's on. What should we get? Maybe it's one of these? Nope. Oh, here we go. Turn it on? Yeah. Off? Hey, yeah, that lights work. Sweet. Okay. Now, listen. Yeah, hear it? Want me to go check and make yep. dead sure? Yep. Let, let's make extra sure on this one. Yep, on. On. That is not the fuel solenoid clicking. It's something back farther. Uh, we'll get the power probe out then and we will make sure it's got power because maybe we just can't feel it. We're doing just a lot of extra testing and checking to make sure because firing this up and just seeing what happens is slightly different than firing up your yep. old Chevy 350 that's been sitting in a barn and yep. a Buick or something. Slightly higher consequences if something goes wrong. Yep. I'm actually going to get you a board too. Well, we go to crank it if the in the event that that doesn't work we which, can close which it i believe it's working because when you turn the key on there's no power which means that it moves back and then when there's when you turn it off there is power which i believe is pulling that pulling it correct back because when you're running this machine if you were to shut off the battery kill switch there yes you can't shut the machine back off there you go that's correct yep i actually learned how to run greater on a 16 G, which was the previous model to this one, but same size machine. Actually, the G's are a little bigger, heavier. Yeah. But same size, like, working part. Yeah. So Quentin is trying to find a board because the other way you can shut a diesel engine off, if it won't shut off, you can't cut off the fuel, is you cut off the air. Those are your only two options. So we find a board that would fit over that. We can put it over the air and take, choke the air out, and this thing will die. Hopefully brain fart moment uh, everything I said was wrong so covering this will not stop the airflow and kill the engine because there's a giant hole right here where the air comes in this this has a cover over it when the engine's running so obviously air comes in somewhere else super dumb on my part but I just overlooked that so now we have to find something that will fit right here like a coffee can to shut off the airflow that's what would work Ignore everything I previously said. The other thing we could do is put the cap back on here and then uh, take this off. This is the actual air inlet and we could put something over that to kill the airflow. So upon further discussion, I think we're gonna go with that plan. We're gonna put the cap back on there. Yep. We're gonna clean all the dirt and stuff out of it, take that screen off the top so that we can put something over and seal it yep. that way. This machine did not have a cap before we got it. The handy thing about being in an equipment salvage yard <laughs> is somebody happened to have a cap that fits so we're able to go grab it. Yep. It's like having your own parts store. Exactly. Be because you literally are the parts store. Yep. That's why I never throw anything away. What in the flamed power probe is going on over here? You have flames on your power probe. Flames? Yeah. Oh. 
Oh, you thought it was on fire? Yeah. No, you literally have flames on your power probe. It's like, what's like, in flames? Michael, why are you watching it flame? Fix it. No, it's a better YouTube video if we don't. <laughs> that would be catastrophic. We don't know what happened. Okay. All you right. You think it's going to smoke us out? Well, I just want to go over mental check. Drive shaft's pulled. Axle shafts are pulled. There's no way it's going anywhere. Oil's full. Powertrain is full. I think we're good to go. Well, we got batteries hooked up. Nothing shorted out. Yep. We've got our safety board to shut it off up there. Yep. Fuel solenoid checks out. Fluids are good. Let's see. So, fuel's the only one we're pretty. What low. I'm going to do too is I'm going to give us a pair of uh, clippers. So that way, if it if if that doesn't work, we'll just clip. We will clip. We're gonna clip this one. Yeah, and then it'll run out of fuel. Yeah. Or spin the filter off of it and it'll suck air. Yeah. So if you look up here, right there, see those holes in the roof? And that oil streak over there? Big scraper exploded. It go boom. Doing the same thing, starting up for the first time yep. and it was a runaway engine. Well you know what? We had the axle shafts pulled. Brakes were engaged, no one got hurt. But one of those things is, if an engine does run away and, it, and it's more than like 10 seconds, 20 seconds, just get everybody Leave. out of the shop and just let it go. Leave. There, yeah. it's, it's not worth engine parts going, because that'll go right through a person, no problem. But yeah, there's probably still pieces of a rod sitting up there. It wasn't a rod, it was something else, but there's probably still engine parts sitting up there somewhere. <laughs> so you're saying diesel engine runs on compression. It's the, there's no spark plugs or anything, so Fuel and air and compression are all it needs. If it has those things, off it goes. And one danger to an engine been sitting a while, even ones that are running, is the turbo seal. Because yep. oil is pumped through the turbo by the engine. And if the turbo seal on the inlet side of the turbo goes bad, and that oil leaks into the inlet side of the yep. turbo, it is then pumping oil into the fuel side of the engine, which oil is fuel, yep. and it will run on that oil and that engine will just keep going and going and going to extreme and high RPM running off its own oil, even yep. if you shut off the fuel at that point. And yep. then, because it's feeding its own fuel, the only way you can possibly stop it is to kill the air. Yep. But like you said, once it gets like 10, once, 15 once, seconds, it, that it, thing's at such a high RPM yep. that putting that board over that air intake, it's probably just gonna it's better to just blow it right through. Back just away, make sure everyone's all right. And just, just get away. Yep. So, I think it lasted for like, a minute something but it felt like years of just watching this thing go but that we were lucky that was the only one I've ever seen do that so, so. my my grandma my grandma drives a truck uh, she had a 3406 B model mm -hmm. uh, run away on her when the tur she was actually driving it down the highway hauling a load and the turbo seal went out on the inlet mm -hmm. side if it goes out on the outlet side it's gonna blow oil out of the stack if it goes out on the inlet side the engine runs away you can turn off the key you can do yep you could ever so you should have put it in a high gear and dumped the clutch it ain't gonna stop it nope. it's gonna blow drive shaft rear and something it yep. will not stop it mm -hmm. and she had to happen so she had to pull over the side of the road get out of her truck and it just screaming higher up until the engine let go luckily it didn't blow apart and through the hood and all that stuff it blew yep. the bottom end of the engine but that happened to her driving down the road yep so the truck just started speeding up and she couldn't stop it when you gotta imagine too right so you blow a turbo seal it's pressurized oil going into that's your main other than the rod bearings and your main bearings and your can anything internally there turbo is main oil feed so it's just as the engine's running even though the fuel shut off it's just pumping its own you know death sentence yeah and the faster the engine runs the because it's running the oil pump. the more oil it pumps which makes it run even faster and diesels yeah. are not high rpm engines but it will go till it gets such a high rpm that it explodes yep and that's why we are taking so many precautions with like, how can we shut this thing down if we have mm -hmm. to and making sure fuel solenoid works. The turbo is the big question. That's what could really screw us here. Yep. But that is a newer looking turbo on it, so. Yep. We'll see, and there's no signs of it leaking. Usually you'll see signs of a bunch of black around, you know, the turbo inlet or the outlet. Everything seems dry. We haven't checked shaft play, but. We'll like I said, I do it right because I do it twice. So I'm going to fire it up, have it blow up, and then I'll show you all the shaft play. <laughs>
<laughs> but you know what? I have that other line that I thought was wrong, that's but it's actually right. right. Yeah. Yeah, because you know that's not going to work. Set it up there; it'll work. On the battery. Yeah. Set the fuel on the battery. Yeah. Perfect. Yes. Yes. Did we get Smart enough? thinking. Yes. Okay. Now we can pump it. Yep. Pump right. it. Pump it. Ooh, oh yeah. Oh, that's pressure. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, we already got fuel. Is that more than what you had before? Oh yeah, definitely. So you're gonna hop up there, run the key. But it's just clicking. Dang it. This is the real key. Pressure gauge. Okay, key is on. There we go. <laughs> A little more pump and it's gonna go. If we get this thing to start with no starting fluid or anything, that's a, that's a healthy motor. Yeah, then it, then we know it's a good one. Oh, that's that grease can I was telling you about. Oh. <laughs> We're greasing all the pins right now. So this grater has an automatic greaser on it that uh, runs off of air. So the air compressor is still hooked up. Yep. So the problem is now that we just built some air in it, it is trying to grease its whole system. Yeah, and it's already greased it about a million times when I was shoving it oh, in. Look at the grease pouring out over here. Yep. <laughs> it's okay. You got a running engine. Runs good. So now that this thing runs, yep, has good oil pressure. Yeah, does everything it's supposed to do. It's going to get torn out. Yep. Dynoed. Yep. And probably what I will do with this engine because it's it's going to be a high use mining application. I do this for all of our customers, but big mining stuff they're going to put a ton of hours on this thing. I usually won't sell that engine as a used takeout, even if it runs good and all that. I'll take it down. With bare block, uh, new cylinder packs, new head, crank, bearings, just to make sure that they're getting a quality product. Even though it sounds super healthy, but this is a very good starting point. Yeah. And it, you can also tell this engine's super healthy is, it didn't need to crank that much before it started. No, once we had fuel pressure to it, it yep. and it no crazy surging or cranking, exactly. like it fired up and it ran, Yep, like smoothly. Yep, that was very good. I don't think this engine's anywhere near as old as this crater. No way. It had to have been refreshed at some point. Yep. But not knowing, you're going to refresh it again. Yep. 100%. Well, that could not have gone much better. Perfect. That's what I like to see. It started with no ether, simple no ether. prime in the pump, had over 80 pounds of oil pressure. Yep. We went through all the checks to make sure nothing could have done anything stupid. Yep. The turbo was our only questionable part, but. 
That was fine, clearly. Perfectly fine. We got a healthy motor. Good motor. What else can you ask for? I know what else we could ask for. A twin, <laughs> a twin turbo, twin supercharged V12 two-stroke Detroit we'll, diesel. We'll see what the people comment on. We'll see yeah. if they want us to do that. If, if they want it, we'll... Uh, I'll spend another thousand bucks on batteries <laughs> and we'll fire it up. You heard it. Let us know down below. Well, hope you guys enjoyed that. We're going to clean up the mess. And uh, Quentin, I guess now that we did all that, it's going to tear this motor back apart. Yep, tear it down. <laughs> tear it down, rebuild it, and uh, it's going to go make another machine live on even longer. So that's what he does here. If you guys enjoyed that, that is bright, and we'll see you next time. Really calm as long as you keep petting him. Yeah, actually it's very energetic. Well done. Pretty calm. Very friendly. Yeah. Should be very aggressive, you know, that we 